I tried 25 versions of Max starting from 3D Studio Max R3 released in 1999 and here are 10 things about this app that drives me crazy. My name is Alex Andrew, you on my channel and let's go to check my top 10 hate list. Slow Material Editor this is my most painful spot. If you have ever worked with the big scene, I mean dozens of heavy shaders and tons of 4K, 8K maps and massive HDRI, then you know how it feels. No matter what workstation you have, when you just open Material Editor for the first time, it's a torture to watch it updates all slots. But when you think it's done, Every time you even look at the untouched sphere or change some parameter, Max decides to update it again. Everything, whole shader, all slots. And if some resources located in the network, it makes the problem even worse. Even so, the new Slate editor is a great for complex shaders, still doesn't solve the core performance issue or not always convenient. Sometimes I even go back to the old compact editor to get something done quicker. Controllers Seriously, this part of 3D Max feels like a time capsule from the 90s. The entire workflow for managing animation controllers is confusing and clunky mess. Even back then in 3D Max R3, this UI felt really outdated. And what disappoints even more, it is still looks and feels exactly the same today, no change. It's rocket solid though, it works good, but setup process is just plain ugly. Thankfully I don't have to deal with it too often because it is outside of my regular to-do list, but every time I do, it's a bold reminder of Max's prehistoric past. Viewport it is well known that 3D Max is incredible at managing massive scenes. You can put billions of polygons in your project and it will process it and render. But for some reason, it still has a frustrating flaw when you have to navigate in such a scene. Once you bring a huge Alembic file or USD with multiple animated objects, crowds or voxel caches, it slows down your entire viewport. And I am not talking about animation playback but even to go another frame become a problem. And the worst part, hiding those objects most of the time doesn't help at all. It's like a giant metal ball chained to your foot since these things got to your project. The only way to make your viewport and time slider snappy again is to use a ridiculous little trick like a temporarily breaking the file path to those elephants in your scene. Obviously this is not an option if you have to see the whole scene with all its parts. Now, when Clarice, a major computer in 3D scene combining, is gone in 2023, this was Max's chance to take the crown of the best heavy scene operator app, but unfortunately, it is still struggling with this basic issue. Splash Screen I agree, 3D Max isn't liking fast at logging up, it is slow, no doubts. But my real frustration is beyond just a slow load. It is the fact that during this wait we are staring at nothing useful. It is pretty screen, sure, but it's a kind of waste of time, it's missed opportunity. Back in the day, I'm talking about 3D Max 5 from 2002, the splash screen was very different. It would act just like a modern games does these days, use their load screens to teach you something. Look at this great idea that got vanished with the time. The splash screen demonstrates a hotkey hints while you are waiting for the program to load. And now they change to an abstract picture. Also it could be for example a feature list from the latest updates. But well, I guess I know the reason, because max patch notes are getting shorter and shorter every year. Instance and reference. This is, isn't a bag, it's a real trap that is familiar to everyone. Just imagine, you are making a copy of a big important mesh object, for some time you are doing some dozens of modifications, maybe collapsing your modificators, and suddenly you realize, mistakenly you made an instance instead of duplicate. Immediately you hit undo, hoping to fix it, but you either run out of undo steps or trigger a max crash. It's that moment of pure frustration and rage indeed. Depends on how far you went and how many autobacks scene files you have. 
and all we need is a simple visual cue, a color flag in the viewport or a clearly visible icon on the side panel to save us from this headache. Just a cursive text and an active little button make unique is not enough, especially if you are working in a 4K, 5K huge screen with minimum UI scaling. Crashes. Max crash comes unexpectedly and with no warning. Even when you're doing just the basic stuff. Select an object, move it and bam and you are staring at your desktop wallpaper with nonsense suggestion to send an error of damage to Autodesk. While it's not as dramatic as memes and funny videos show it, these unpredictable crashes sometimes are a real headache. In the worst case, it will force you to roll back at days of work. Hopefully you have an incremental saving system on. The good news is you may prevent it by at least keeping your scene in order and clean, avoiding buggy scripts or old and sketchy plugins, watch your geometry mesh and being very careful with import. Old model collections are notorious for bringing in a hidden corruption in your scene that acts like a time bomb, making it almost impossible to find the real source of the crashes. RAM management. Back when I started with 3D Max, my basic PC was making everything painfully slow. Loading, rendering, even just updating a viewport background image. I used to think that powerful workstation would run Max as easy as Windows Notepad, and I have never been so wrong. Over the time, no matter how much I was upgrading my CPU or RAM, the app's responsiveness improved very little in some specific tasks. These days, when I have a decent rig, I still have to wait at some moments, like loading up or updating something, shaders, and I doubt that going any further, like more memory, faster standard, more CPU cores or frequency would make much difference, except maybe for the rendering, of course. Standard toolset. 3 d Max has come a long way. Today we have a better standard rendering engine, a built-in scatter tool and even liquid simulations. But if you used 3 d Max around the first decade of the century, you would know how rough it was. The scanline render? Outdated and barely usable for anything beyond the game intros from the 90s. Liquids? Non-existent. Practical flow? Slow and clunky. Fire effects? Just embarrassing. Back then, if you were into FX or lighting, you needed a whole arsenal of plugins. There was simply no other way. Autodesk really neglected 3D Max in early 2000s. Despite of this, somehow it acquired a massive fan base around, which turned into crazy popularity and countless amount of tutorials, scripts and plugins. Autodesk. Let's be honest, since this B Corp took over, 3D Max has stuck forever as a tool for modeling, architecture visualization and lighting. If you were looking to dive into other areas of computer graphics, the standard toolset just isn't enough and be prepared to invest in additional plugins. With the right third-party add-ons, 3D Max can handle almost anything, but out of the box it is heavily limited to its areas selected by Autodesk. And this is the problem, due to extremely wide range of the company's products, 3D Max in its basic set will always be within the limits of what is permitted so as not to affect the sales of the rest of the company's products. Why would you sell only one tool for everything if you can offer a whole set for a bunch of money? Modifier stack. Maybe it's not a hate, but I really wish that 3D Max had a node-based object modifiers, similar to what is Houdini about. Just as layer system in Photoshop, nodes in Nuke or DaVinci feels more flexible and logic. But I get it, adding nodes would mean completely rethinking how modeling works in 3D Max. Autodesk is unlikely to take that risk unless they decide to build a whole new app to compete with SideFX package, which probably won't happen. So for now, we are stacking with the classical modifiers. That's a wrap. 3D Max isn't perfect, no one is. But after all these years, it is still remains my top choice. And what about you? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to hit subscribe for more honest takes on this channel. See you on another videos. Bye.